in today's lesson um, we're going to go through question um, 17 and question 19 um, and these are on page 85 so you would have had those to do over the weekend I think and then I'm also going to take a look at um, the new thing and um, the new topic called interest And again, this is basically just um, applications of percentages. So the, this whole chapter basically, guys, is percentages. So you need to be good at percentages to tackle this chapter. So if you need to get up to speed on um, percentages, that's what you have to study, okay? Now, question 17. Um, in a sale, the marked prices are reduced by 30%. I'll calculate the sale price of a jacket if the marked price is 350 so it's 350 in the marked price. That means during the sale, it's going to be 350 minus 30%. So in a sale, things come down in price, right? We know that, yeah? And they're gonna come down by 30%. So basically this question is asking us to find, oh, find 30% um, of 350. And once you've found 30% of 350, you then subtract. 30% from 350. So really, this, this thing here, subtracting, that's quite easy to do, okay? But this thing here, that's kind of the hard part of this question, finding 30% of 350. So 350, sorry, and 30% of 350, that's the same as um 30 percent times 350 which is equal to one hundred and five okay so that's that part there so we have found out what thirty percent of three hundred and fifty is so therefore if it's reduced by three, if it's reduced by 105, we start off with 350 and we reduce it by 105 and that gives us 245. So in the sale, the price of the coat will be 245 euro. So that was part one. Again, if you have any questions on this, let me know on the chat and I will go through it um, again for you, okay? Maybe in a different way or something. I'll try and explain it a bit better. Part two then, find the marked price of a dress if the sale price is 168. So sale price is equal to 168 and we are looking for marked price. Right, so we have to find the marked price Now, that's equal to 100% minus the sale. So that's the same thing as 70%. So it used to be 100%, and then during the sale it gets reduced by 30%. So that means that the 168, that is 70%. Okay, so 70% is 168. I might just write that out very factually. 70% is 168. And this question is asking us to find out what the 100% was. What is 100% of 168? So the way to tackle this is to find 1% first of all. And if 70%, I better write that out a bit clearer for you. So 70% equals 168. So 70 of these percentages is the same thing as 168. One of these percentages must be 168 divided by 70. So 1% equals in our calculator, um, 168 divided by 70 is equal to 
2.4. So if 1% is equal to 2.4, 100% is equal to 2.4 times 100. So 100% must equal 240. So it used to cost 240, but we reduce it by 30% down to 168. Okay, so that was question 17. Let's take a look now at question 19. When an item is sold for 176 euro, the profit is 10% on the cost price. When the selling price is increased to 192, calculate the percentage profit on the cost price. Okay, so 176, that equals some percentage. What percentage is that equal to? That includes the profit of 10%. So the item used to cost 100%, or sorry, the item, I bought the item for 100%, and then I sell it on for a profit. So I'm going to sell it on for 110% of what I bought it for. So the 176 must equal 110%. Again, the first step is to find 100%. So let's look at 1% first of all. So 176 divided by 110. If 110 of these percentages is equal to 176, one of these percentages must equal 176 divided by 110. So 1% must equal 1 1.76. That can't be right. Um, so 1% equals 1.6. So 1% is 1.6. So if 1% is 1.6, 100% must equal 160. Because we multiply 1.6 1 by 100. So if one of these percentages is 1.6, 100 of these percentages must be 1.6 multiplied by 100. If one apple costs 160, 100 apples will cost 160 multiplied by 100. Same kind of thinking there, okay? Now, so that's what, that's what we spent on the item before we sold it for a profit. So that means that if I sold the item for 192, well, I'm going to represent that as a percentage of that. And to do that, we write it as a fraction first of all. So we go 192 over 160. So that's the fraction. And to turn that fraction into a, into a percentage, we multiply it by 100. To turn any um, fraction or decimal into a percentage, we multiply that fraction or decimal by 100. So it's 192 divided by 160 multiplied by 100 equals 120 percent. So we have turned that into a percentage. We've turned that fraction into percentage. So therefore, the percentage profit would be 20 percent because it used to be 100 percent but it's gone up to 120%. So therefore, it's increased by 20%. So 20% must be our answer to that question. It used to cost 100%. It now costs 120%. Therefore, 20% is the difference between those two. Are we okay with that? So that was question 17 and question 19. Now we're going to move on to something new called interest. And... Let's just take a look at a really quick example of this. So interest. And the easiest way of thinking about interest is that if you put money into a bank account, so let's say we have a million euro. So we have a million euro, okay? And we put that into a bank account. Because our bank uses that money, okay? It, it invests it, it lends it out to other people and it charges them, okay? To encourage us to put our money into the bank, 
It says, if you leave your money in the bank for an entire year, we will give you a little bit of money for doing that. And that little bit of money is called interest. And interest is usually um, given as a percentage of the amount of money you have in the bank. So this bank that we put our million euro into, this gives us 3% per annum. Now, 3% per annum, that means per year or per year. So you guys might have things like annuals. You might get an annual every Christmas. Um, so let's say the, the Premier League might have an annual. Um, so that would be something which is published every year. It might be, I don't know, the, it might give you all the statistics of the players in the Premier um, League or Premier Division. Anyway, whatever it is. So that would be published every year. You'll get this annual. So annum there means year, okay? Um, yeah. Now, um, so if we leave our million euro in for one entire year, we will get one million at the end of the year in our bank account. We will have plus 3%. In our bank account, we will have this amount of money. So we need to find the 3% of what million, first of all. And that's equal to, I know what that is, that's 30,000. So because I have a million in the bank, it's really easy for me to know this, okay? So I know that my savings every year gives me 30,000 a year. Now, that means that at the end of that year, I will have the million, the original 1 million euro, plus this interest. This is the money that the bank have given me. This thing here, that's the interest. And that's the money the bank have given me because I've saved with them. So kind of to thank you, to thank me for saving with them, they, they give me interest. This was the original sum of money here, okay? And we would call that the principle. And I'm not sure if you need to know that word or not, but it's a handy word to know. That's called the principle. So the principle is the amount of money you put in and the interest is the bit of money the bank gives you every year. So at the end of the year, in my bank account, I will have 1 million and 30,000 euro. So there's nothing too bizarre there. Hopefully you know what interest is already from doing business studies or maybe even from primary school. So you should have an idea what's going on there, okay? Now, the interesting thing is what happens in the second year? So this was the first year. During the second year, do you think it'd be fair for the bank to only give me another 30,000? So in year one, I put a million in and they give me 30,000. But in year two, I effectively put a million and 30,000 in and they're still only going to give me 30,000. There's something fishy there, right? So really, to be fair, the bank should give me 3% of 1 million and 30,000. And that's equal to um, 3%, 3% multiplied by 1030123. So that's equal to 30,900 euro. So at the end of the second year, I will have the original million plus the interest from the first year plus the interest from the second year.
So that will give me 1,060,900. So during the second year, I have earned 900 euro more than I did in the first year. Because this piece of interest up here, that's also going to earn interest. And that's the way banks work. Okay. So your interest will earn interest if you leave it in long enough. And when that happens, that process is called compound interest. So when your interest also earns interest, that's compound interest. If the bank just kept giving me 30,000 every year, that would be simple interest. And there's very few things that actually work like that. Most things in the world work on the basis of compound interest. Weird things like pensions might work on simple interest, where every year they will give you 30,000 to live on and as your pension. But that would you, you take out your 30,000 and then your money grows again into another 30,000 and you take out your 30,000 and it keeps doing that. That would be simple interest. But normally that's, that's not how things work. Normally interest is dealt with in a compound manner. So it's compound interest. The, the, the interest also earns interest in the following years. Now, we're going to take a look at um, question three on page 89. And it's 900 euro is put in for two years at 5%. So 900 euros put in there for two years at 5%. So therefore one year, let's call it first year. It's 900 multiplied by 5% equals. So 900 multiplied by 5% is 45 euro. So in the first year, you earn 45 euro. That means you end with 900 plus 45, which is 945 euro. Now, that's what we ended the first year with. So we will start the second year with that. And that 945 euro is going to earn 5%. which gets us up to 47.25. And we notice that 47.25 is bigger than 45 because the interest we earned the last year is also earning interest this year. So we're going to end the two years with 945 plus 47.25, which is equal to 992.25 euro. So over the two years, this person has earned 92 euro and 25 cent. Okay, so I'm going to get you guys to do question four, five, and six on page um, 89 for homework, right? So it's exactly the same as this. So you're, now, when you go into Leaving Cert, there'll be, a, there'll be another way of doing this, but for the time being, while you're still in junior cycle, okay, you're gonna take it year by year by year. So you're gonna work out what it was worth at the end of the first year, then you'll work out what it was worth at the end of the second year, then you will work out what it was worth at the end of the third year. 
Okay, and that's that's the best way for you guys to do it. If you have me in leaving search, we'll talk about a different way of doing it then. But for the time being, that's the most straightforward way for you guys. So homework tonight, page 89, question four, five, and six. I'll see you guys tomorrow.